Hello, this is Julian and you are on Idoblox and in this video I'm going to tell you about what are the variable types in Solidity. In Solidity, contrary to JavaScript, you have to declare the type of your variables before you are able to use them. So it's really important to understand the variable type in Solidity. By the way, I created a free email course to teach you how I got my first remote blockchain job paid $100,000 a year. So if you want to learn all my secrets, you just have to sign up at this URL. All right, so let's get started. So this is Remix and this is a smart contract and I'm going to show you the different variable type in Solidity. So we can group this variable type into three categories. So the first category is fixed size types. So this type occupy a fixed size in memory. Then the second time is variable size types. So these type are a little bit more complex and they can hold the data of a variable length. So if you don't know in advance what's going to be the size of your data, then that's one of these types that you need to use. And the last one is user defined data. So if you need a custom representation of data, that's what you need to use. So I know that it sounds a little bit abstract. So let's get let's give some specific example. So in a fixed size type, one of the most useful type is the Boolean type. So that is ex exactly like it in JavaScript. For example, you can say uh, is uh, is ready. Maybe that your smart contract can have different states. So you can store this in a Boolean variable. So this can be true or false. Then another type is uint that stands for unsigned integer. So this type is very, very useful because every time you want to do a financial transfer, like sending Ether or sending an ERC20 token, then you are going to use this type. So this is a little bit similar to the number type in JavaScript, except that in Solidity, you can only hold positive numbers and these numbers have to be integer. So they cannot be floating point numbers. It has to be one, two, three, etc., etc. So you're going to be using this type a lot in your smart contract. Then you have the address type to represent Ethereum addresses. So this is very important when you want to send some Ether or an ERC20 token, you need to know what is the recipient address. Or when you want to interact with another smart contract, you need to know also its address. So to declare an address, use the address keyword and then you name your variable. So for example, it can be the recipient for some financial transfer. And the last fixed size type that I like to show you is called bytes, bytes 32. And you can call this data, for example, and this can hold any arbitrary binary data. So any series of bytes that represent some data, then you can use this type. So I know that this type sounds a little bit intimidating, but it's actually very used to represent strings because in Solidity it's not very convenient to manipulate strings. So oftentimes people prefer to use, to use byte 32 if they know in advance that the size of their string will not exceed 32 bytes. All right, so that's it for the fixed size types. So next, let's see what are the variable size type. So the first one is the string. So you should be familiar with this one. So for example, uh, it can be name. Um, so it can be a string of any length. However, contrary to JavaScript in Solidity, we don't have a lot of convenience function to manipulate string. So as I suggest before, in many cases, before people prefer to represent their string as a byte 32. Another possibility is also to represent your string using another type that is called uh, bytes. So the, the bytes type is a generalization of the bytes 32 type that we had before. So we can also call this, for example, underscore data. So this is also used to represent any kind of binary data, but contrary to bytes 32, this does not have any predefined length. Then we have arrays to represent a collection of data. For example, if you want to declare an array of integer, then you use this notation and then you give the name of your array. Contrary to JavaScript, in Solidity, arrays have to be array of the same type. 
so you can only have array of of u int for example or arrays of byte 32 but it's not possible to have arrays that are mixed so like the first element is integer then the second element is boolean value uh etc etc so it's slightly less flexible than in javascript next we have mappings so mapping are associative array they have keys and, and keys map to value so we declare them with the mapping keyword and we define the type of the key so for example this can be an integer and then we define the type of the value that is mapped by e by each key so here it can be a string for example and then we define the name of the mapping for example it can be uh, users so in this case that means that you will access user by a number so for example user of i don't know of 10 and this is going to give you some string so this is very similar to how javascript object work so this is very similar to the way javascript object work so that's it for the variable size type and now let's continue to the user defined data so the first type that we're going to use for that is struct so you first use the struct keyword then you name your struct so in general you're going to use an uppercase so for example this can be user and then you open the curly braces and inside your struct you're going to define a different field so for example let's say that we want an id so you int id then another field will be a string and that's going to be a name of the user and you could you can also have some variable size type as a field so we can also have a an array of integer here and this can be i don't know a friend ids and you terminate this by a semicolon. So this is also similar to a JavaScript object, but the difference with the mapping before is that with the user struct, you don't have a container. You have to instantiate a single user, but after you need to put this user somewhere, for example, in a container like a mapping or like an, an array. So in your smart contract, you're probably gonna make use a lot of the struct. And the last user defined type is the enum type. So this is good to represent some option, for example. So you define it by using the enum keyword and after you name your struct. So it can be, for example, I don't know, uh, a color. And then you open the curly braces and then you're gonna define a different option. So for example, red green blue so this enum can be used as a sort of labels for example if somewhere in your smart contract you want to represent the color red then you can use this notation color dot red or if you want to use green color dot green etc etc so for those of you who are familiar with the c language then you actually might be familiar with enum and struct so that's it for this high level overview of the variable type in solidity i'm sure that you still have a lot of questions we didn't get into the details of these different variable types don't worry because in the course of this series we're going to go deep into each type and i'm going to show you how you can manipulate each type and in particular for the most complex type like array or mapping or struct I know that there are a lot of questions that I haven't covered, but I will cover everything in future. This video was just to give you a very high level overview uh, on the different data type and how you can represent your data. So now that we know how we can declare our variable, then the next step is to manipulate this variable. And for that, we need a function. So in the next video, I'm gonna teach you the basics of a function in Solidity.